the more government you have, the more society is failing because you you need more coercion. You need you get more. Do, do you, do you, does that thought resonate with you at all? Oh, that's completely correct. Uh, the essence of government is force and coercion, and as Tacitus uh, said in the second century, uh, the more numerous the laws, the more corrupt the society. And this is, of course, why the United States has become more corrupt over the years, as we have so many laws which allow officials in power to dispense favors arbitrarily as they will and, and uh, uh, collect bribes for dispensing these favors and so forth. Uh, no, the institution of government itself is corrupt and corrupting and unnecessary in, today, in, in, in an advanced society. In fact, in primitive days, it might have been possible, it was never moral, never ethical, but it might have been possible for the king in a primitive society to say, well, you take that ox, ox cart and you charge so much for your wheat and so forth, because it was simple and it, perhaps a simple society could be directed. But today, with billions of transactions every day by billions of people, it, it, it's not only immoral, but it's uh, it, technically impossible for the government to try to direct these things. <clears throat> well, you mentioned that technically impossible. Uh, first, uh, uh, Tom, I'd like you to tell our viewers who Friedrich Hayek was, as an example. And then he wrote a paper, I think it was about 1945, about knowledge and, and how it's just impossible for any one person or small group of people to know enough to make all these decisions for everybody else. Well, Hayek belongs to a school of economic thought called the Austrian School of Economics. He won the Nobel Prize in 1974 for his work on central banking and how it screws up economies. So uh, another example of how we don't need these institutions. But Hayek's essay on the use of knowledge in society was based on the idea that there's no, it's impossible for any one human mind to amass all the knowledge that would be necessary if you wanted to centrally plan society. Everybody's got his own localized knowledge. He knows that if I take this truck route, even though technically it may be longer in an extensive sense, uh, nevertheless it's, it's more efficient to go this way. There's no way a central planner could know that. We've all got a lot of implicit knowledge that we just sort of know instinctively. We, we wouldn't even know to verbalize. And so in other words, if you were to make any sense whatsoever of the productive structure and try to give it some rational direction, you wouldn't know where to begin. It would be impossible, be the height of hubris to think you could substitute your judgments for the judgments of hundreds of millions or billions of people who actually have the relevant knowledge necessary. 